Hey guys. So this video we're going to try doing pattern number 19. Uh, this is in the advanced one. I don't really know if this is really uh, too difficult once you kind of figure out a couple tricks with it. But uh, it did keep, take me a couple times to do it. And I've kind of done this one uh, two different ways. So the, the first time I did it, uh, what I actually did is probably what most of you would assume, which is let's just get that kind of one circular shape with that sort of like uh, almost like a diamond kind of effect in the middle where we have this crisscross of lines and that circle. Uh, now I could do just that circular piece and then try to get that to tile, but the one issue I ran into with that one is when you do that, when you kind of get this circular piece to overlap with the other circular pieces through a generator, there was a lot of back and forth trying to get the lines to not cross over the next circle. And so I just felt like I was spending too much time jumping back between the generator and the shapes to get it to like look perfect. So instead, what I kind of found was maybe a little easier actually, is instead of doing a circle, what if we broke it into this as our tileable section? So it's gonna be um, the circle in the middle and we're gonna try to get just the corners because this right here could also be visually like what we consider a tile. That might be slightly simpler for us so we don't have to kind of worry about the generator fighting with it the whole time. Let's try it out. Uh, now back here, we're gonna make a shape node. Uh, of course, we're gonna start with a disc and since we're going to have to do a few edge detects on this, let's bring the scale down to like 0.95. Select it, edge detect, and we're going to invert it. See what the thickness looks like on that one. Um, that's actually probably close by default, so I think we're going to leave that the way it is. Now, after the edge detect, I also need to kind of get these circles in the corner. Now, remember, this circle is going to tile, and you can kind of see how it just barely butts up on the edge of that tileable shape. Look what happens when I hit space to tile this. See how it's not right? Uh, what I'm going to do is transform the edge detect just to make it large enough where it barely collides with the other one. Let me, okay, let me check. Is that what's happening? Do they kind of overlap? I actually have them overlapping too much. So I'm going to scale this in a little more. It probably needs to be right about there so they barely touch but they don't actually like cross over each other and share the line all right let's hit space get rid of the tile for a second so there's one now on top of that if i kind of come back here we have that one piece but there's also those overlapping circles that are kind of kind of create this little shape right here so how do i get that uh, that's going to be pretty easy so if I could take this shape here let's do another transform off to the side with this guy and we're going to do a 50% offset vertically and horizontally. And you can see how we're already kind of getting that shape. And look at the reference. That is exactly that right there. So what I think we can do from here is take those two pieces and then we're going to blend them together with our max lighten. There we go. All right. So there. There is a good chunk of that already finished. Now what I'm missing is this section right here and notice how like on the outside, again, if we're thinking about this being the tileable section, this area also has to tile in the corner. Let's try to get the center part working first and I think the rest should kind of like just fall into place. So I've got a circle and a couple lines. Okay, now I need to make sure the lines don't cut through the circle. So I'm gonna make sure that we also mask something off properly. Let's take the same shape node. I mean, why not? I mean, it is, it is a disc. We don't need to make a brand new one for the same shape. So we're gonna take the same shape node, uh, put it into transform and scale this down quite a bit. But on the transform, we're gonna turn off tiling so it doesn't repeat. And I'm gonna make sure this hits an edge detect. And uh, let's invert it, okay. Uh, now let's kind of see what this looks like when it blends into this guy. Okay, what do we get when we max these two together? Okay, position is probably fine, but the scale is not good. So back in that transform where I scaled it down, I can just scale it until right about maybe there. Let's see. 
That actually is probably about right. Okay, we're going to go with that. That feels okay. Now, I want to get the lines cutting through it. Now, to do this, let's try doing a, let's do a shape node. We're going to scale in one direction, like X. Make it pretty thin. We have to play around with the size to get it perfect. We're going to bring that in just a little bit. And I need to turn it because this needs to be at like 45 degree angles. Let's come down here. We're going to do 45. And I wonder if we can get this to mirror properly because I need to make like an X with it. I didn't really do this last time, but I'm kind of thinking this might work. Okay, that's X. Um, okay, so the corner, if I it's pulling from the top left where there's nothing, I bet if I do top right, it's going to work. Look at that. Well, that's kind of cool. I didn't even know that was going to work. Um, now, one thing I can do as well when I blend this in, I want you to see what happens. So let's click on this, blend, put it to max. So now adding an additional piece. That's kind of cool looking. Interesting how it's like exactly the same length as that outer circle. That was not intentional. But let's take the shape and I'm going to bring in the Y scale. Okay, we're going to bring this down right to the point when it kind of collides right there. Now what I want to do is also bring in the width because that looks way too thick. So let's manually type in 0 0.01. That looks much closer. Okay, so pretty good. The only issue I'm running into is I don't want it to cut through the circle. That needs to be kind of left open. The good thing is we can do that because we kind of have that circular shape we built back here. This guy is going to be the, the solution, that original white dot. So what I can do is pull this and basically molt that or subtract it from that result. So let's, uh, let's try this out. Hopefully it doesn't eat into the other shape, but let's see. So what happens actually if I subtract it? from this guy. So I'm subtracting the white from the other shape. Now it did work, but look what happened to that line. So that's eating into it. Okay, so let's think of another way to do this. Let's delete that. So these are adding together uh, based on this guy. I want to make a shape that just doesn't allow it to add in this one section. So I wonder what would happen if I took this same shape we just had. What if I put it into here on the opacity of the blend? Ah, now look. It's working, but it's doing the opposite. It's adding within that because it sees this is the white shape. So it says, oh, this is where you wanted to add um, the A input or the foreground. So what we're missing is we want to invert it. This is going to be pretty easy. So what I could do now, let's just kind of move this up a little bit. I could um, move this somewhere around here. Let's branch that shape off into an invert grayscale. We're going to move that right about there. Let's move that down, just kind of reorganizing things. So this is now going to go to an invert grayscale to flip it. The inverted version is what we're going to put into the opacity. Look at that. So it prevents it from uh, adding in that one section. So we're getting pretty close. Now what I'm missing at this point is I need to also kind of do the same effect in the corners. So this needs to be offset. Uh, so that should be fairly easy to do. Um, we could just repeat this process one more time. So let's just do that. We're gonna make a blend. This time I want it offset. So we're gonna make a transform from this shape and we're gonna do our 50% horizontal and vertical. So there's the lines from the corner. So let me kind of show you what we're doing. We're doing this bit. Okay, now that looks pretty good. Let's then add it in, just like we did before. Okay, put it to max. So far, so good. But remember, this is where that little bit of the circle is going to pop out. See what it looks like when it repeats, when I hit space. There's a circle that needs to be here in the corner. So again, we need this guy. So I'm taking the invert grayscale. That's also going to get put into 
a transform and we're doing the exact same thing. We're gonna offset it so it follows this. Oh, look what happened here. Okay, so this guy right now is not tiling. Now the reason it's not tiling is because way earlier on when I scaled this down, I actually killed the tiling on this guy. This is an interesting little issue. And it, you can see how it kind of carried through. Well, that kind of stinks. Not a big deal though, because I bet our, the way to fix this guy is gonna be just to move this over a little bit. Let's take this and then mirror it around to fill in all the other space. So we're gonna do mirror grayscale. Okay, see how we're doing this? Pulling from the top left, from the corner. There we go. So this is a little quick way to fix that problem. Even though it didn't tile, we can still get it to work. Now this is what we're gonna want on the next opacity connection. There we go. Oh, I'm missing the circle. The obvious thing. Whoops, we forgot that guy. So the circle never made it over there. That was my mistake. Uh, all right, we're gonna have to kind of rearrange this a little bit. It's getting a little unorganized. So let's move this up. We're gonna do a transform. And I bet it's gonna have the same issue that we saw before. So let's see. So we're gonna move this guy up. Let's uh, move this over here. What I'm taking is that uh, the initial outline for the circle, we need to like take this guy, offset it, because I need to put this in the corner. Yep, there it is, there's my problem again. I then need to mirror it. Ty keep typing in mirror incorrectly, every video. Uh, mirror, we're gonna do mirror corner. Okay, there's the circle. And let's see, how did I do this before? That was just adding. Okay, I'm gonna move this over. We're gonna put a blend right here. Oops, that needs to be the foreground and background. And set to max. Okay, there we go, there's the corner. Now, when it gets to the line, it's perfect. This one's kind of crazy looking, um, the way we kind of did this one because we have so many different like overlapping connections. But we're ending up with the right result. And if you tile it, you can see it's, it's definitely working. Now, let me just kind of come back here and see what's going on with the tile. Uh, so it's a four by four. That is super easy. Um, we actually really don't even need to use a generator for this. I know typically I use generators to kind of make something tile, but when it's just a simple make it repeat more, you don't need to go into something as heavy as a generator because those are kind of um, more intense to process. So instead what we're gonna do is just put a transform on it and cut the width in half twice. And you can tell that has a very, very similar effect to tiling it. And there we go. So now we uh, have got a really close match. That's probably perfect uh, to pattern number 19.